Ever since I got my hands on an iPhone, I've been as loyal to Apple as a dog to its bone. But lately, I'm starting to sniff around elsewhere. Just like any age old romance, my love for the Apple ecosystem seems to be getting a bit stale. So I took a leap. I've sold my M2 Mac Studio and swapped my M2 MacBook Air for the Lenovo Legion Slim 5i and braced myself for either regret or potentially revelation. And in doing this, my journey led me to identify these five critical areas that really defines what makes a good laptop actually good. Now, a side note here, Lenovo and Intel liked my idea to move away from Apple so much, I wonder why, that they kindly agreed to sponsor this video. But I did buy this Legion Slim 5i myself, but they got no say in this video whatsoever. So the links to buy this will be down below. But for now, let's start with the first part on whether this is a good laptop, which is something that most people focus on first, which is the ports and the specs. And something that I love about this laptop is the IO. Like compared to the MacBook Air, it is in a league on its own. Like on the back, you have two USB-A ports, an ethernet port, full HDMI 2.1, and then the power ports. Then on one side, you've got USB-C, a second USB-C that also delivers power to charge other devices and a headphone port. Then on the other side, you get a full-sized SD card slot and a switch to toggle the webcam on or off for some added privacy. Now, in comparison to the MacBook Air, I've got two USB-C ports, Thunderbolt ports, and I have to carry around one of these flipping dongles with me everywhere I go. But it doesn't stop at just the ports because you also get a really nice display, which runs up to 165 hertz, which is so, so good. Now, I have had 240 hertz on this insane, like, ultra-wide 57-inch monitor behind me, and it looks so nice, even in day-to-day -day productivity work, but especially when gaming. Of course, assuming you have a machine capable enough to run a screen of that size. Now, I also do a lot of creative work, obviously, within the kind of line of business I'm in, and this one has up to 100% sRGB, so I know what I'm looking at is going to be color accurate, whether I'm doing video editing, Lightroom, photos, whatever it may be. Now, you also get a 4060 graphics card, which is capable of playing some of the latest games, 16 gig of memory, and a 512 gig SSD. And all of this came to £1,689, which is on par with a MacBook Air of a similar spec. Now, that's the first part of the puzzle. Like, sure, specs are great. What matters more is the experience. And specifically here, I wanted to see how it would do as a replacement for my MacBook Air, because one of the big things that you lose when switching to an Android phone whilst still using a Mac are things like the copy and paste, making and receiving phone calls on your Mac, replying to messages, seeing your notifications, and even accessing your photos. And there are a few options. Now using Unison, you can transfer files, photos, make and receive phone calls, access text messages, send text messages, and that includes iMessages if you're using an iPhone. And you can also see all of your phone notifications too, like all from your PC's desktop without having to touch your phone. Now, the only thing it seems to be missing from Microsoft's own phone link is the ability to copy and paste between devices, which would be nice to have, but you can basically use any phone and get access to everything else. And the nice thing is that because it's connected directly to the phone, when you snap a photo, it's there instantly. There's no waiting for it to like sync to iCloud, then waiting for it to download from iCloud to your computer, it's instant. And I love that you can transfer files to and from your phone too, basically using your phone as this like external storage if you need to quickly transfer some files between machines. Now, one area that it doesn't quite match the Mac is when receiving those two-factor authentication codes. Like over in the Apple world, if you use Safari, these codes will automatically fill in for you. But personally, I use the Brave browser instead, so that never really worked anyway. But with Unison, you can just copy and paste those codes instead. And that works just as well. And all of this is honestly a really nice thing to see as someone who has come from this walled garden that Apple puts us into. So to see that you get those same features whilst using an Android device and really any make or model of laptop is actually quite impressive. Now, in the same way that I love the variation of Android phones available to buy, like flips and folds and fast charging and 100 times zoom and, you know, all that kind of variation. Windows laptops also provide similar options here. Now, Lenovo, as an example, have a whole range of laptops tuned specifically for certain tasks. You've got machines like the Yoga, which completely flips around. The ThinkBook and the ThinkPad devices are solid. They're portable. The Legion is their kind of gaming and creator range of machines. Now, they're just options to fit any budget or any requirements. And I just love that we have the choice. That's kind of the thing I feel that Apple has been restricting me on. There isn't much choice. It's drawn the gray one or the slightly grayer gray one or the really gray one. But the next part of what makes a good laptop a good laptop, and the big question that came across my mind, of course, was about the performance. How can a Windows laptop, and not just that, but an Intel Windows laptop, compete with Apple Silicon? Like something that's fast, quiet, efficient, which isn't something we could say about laptops until only very, very recently. Like for me, coming from a MacBook Air, the Lenovo Legion actually 
holds up really, really well. Now, it is rare that I can push my MacBook to a place where it significantly struggles. Like for me, that's really only when I go hard with like video editing and I'm editing multiple clips on top of each other. And on the Legion is a similar story, but it's different. I don't normally believe in benchmark tests because my experience is that benchmarks don't always show the real world results. But running this on the M2 MacBook Air and the Legion does kind of explain what I'm seeing here. Now, the M2 MacBook Air is faster on the single core performance, but the Lenovo is faster on multi-core performance. And all of this comes from Intel's 13th generation chip and Intel's performance hybrid architecture, which has been specifically designed for the needs of the most demanding games. Like I saw in the benchmark tests, you benefit from more threads and more cores, which results in a decent jump in your gaming performance. There's also Intel Thread Director 1, which manages to keep your gaming free of interruptions and stops just any background tasks from interrupting or, or really slowing down your gameplay. And there's Intel Smart Cache, where expanded cache sizes on the chip will accelerate the processor for better performance and higher FPS. And the Legion also has a ton of thermal management stuff going on inside, which means it can push that little bit harder. That's what she said. <laughs> and just sustain those higher levels of performance. You got all the vents around the back, around the sides, even the grill underneath the screen here, which looks like speakers. Well, they're not. They're actually for thermal management. Like the whole machine is built for thermal management. Now, what this does mean is that this laptop is no slouch when it comes to performance. It handles all of my day-to-day -day productivity stuff, just fine, you know, emails, browsing, all the good stuff. It handles editing photos in Lightroom, some light video edits in Premiere, and it also handles gaming, which is something that my Apple MacBook Air can't really do. At least it's very, very limited, but with a full window system and with an RTX 4060 inside, which I find mind blowing considering the size of 4090 cards, I can play all of the popular titles. And since I have Xbox Game Pass, that means I can play a ton of Xbox titles for free on my PC. But my go-to for playing games is pretty much Fortnite every single night of the week. I'm on it almost every night. So let's see how well it performs. Honestly, this is a really solid laptop and the battery life is actually impressive too. I kind of thought that it might feel a bit like a downgrade to a Windows machine, but it's actually impressively similar. Now I know the MacBook Air is rated for something like 18 hours of battery life, but under normal use, it is more like seven to eight hours of battery life, which is actually bang on what this laptop is also capable of. Now the fourth part of this mechanical puzzle is support. Now we all know how incredible Apple are when it comes to their customer support. Now, yes, there are a few edge cases, of course, but generally speaking, Apple support is some of the best in the business. Now, I don't have any direct comparisons with Lenovo. I've not had to speak to Lenovo about anything. But one thing I have noticed when leaving the Apple ecosystem is that other brands basically not wanting to touch Apple. Like, kind of understandable, I guess, but also quite unreasonably. Like, I remember having issues with a smaller version, a 49-inch ultra wide screen a couple of years ago, and nobody would talk to me about it. Like, all I got was, it's not supported, it's not been tested, we can't help you. Which is crazy, because it's just a screen, surely. And like we all know, if you buy everything Apple, then you're fine. Apple support itself is fantastic. But if you want to use something else, then the support that you can get can be pretty limited outside of Apple's own support. Now, Windows has been around for a very, very long time. There are millions of companies who design their hardware and software to work on Windows. So whilst I would be surprised if Lenovo's support is good as Apple, perhaps that's something I can test in the future. The fact is that support from the third parties is significantly better on Windows. But the final parts to what makes a good laptop a good laptop, something I haven't really appreciated for a very long time now being in the Apple ecosystem, is how easy it is to upgrade. And simply speaking, it is just really easy. There are just 10 Phillips head screws standing between you and affordable upgrades. Apple literally makes a special type of screw that needs a special type of tool for you to remove it to get access to your device to upgrade it. And you can't even do that because most of the components are soldered to the flipping device in the first place. It's like trying to put on skinny jeans after Thanksgiving dinner, but with the Lenovo, it is like sweatpants where there's always room. You can easily replace the battery. You can upgrade the memory, something that can cost you hundreds with an Apple machine. And there are also two M2 storage slots, which means you could grab a decently fast M2 SSD on say like a Black Friday discount and instantly upgrade the space in your machine. Now on Apple, that just isn't possible. And you have to buy the memory and the storage configuration from day one that you think will see you through until you next upgrade, how many years down the line that might be. So taking those key areas into consideration, is the Lenovo Legion 5i a good laptop? I think it is. And as someone who has recently built my first proper gaming PC, one that can drive this ridiculous 57 inch ultra wide monitor, I am really enjoying just the flexibility that comes with being on Windows. So become a Patreon to come watch the after party show. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye bye.